Today, we're going to focus on kind of a big picture topic. We're going to focus on habitats. Habitats are important because that's where you find living things living. See, that's their homes. And habitats actually provide living things for important necessities or needs. All habitats are going to provide food. They're going to provide water. They're going to provide shelter. And they're going to provide space. So let's check these out. Let's get a little more detailed. First two are pretty easy. Living things have to have energy. And they get that energy from food. So they're either going to make it themselves like plants do, or they're going to eat other living things like animals do. So that's a basic. Habitats are gonna provide the needs of a living thing to get that energy. Water, we talked about this. All living things need water in some way. So they're either going to live in it or around it or get it from the food that they're eating. Their bodies are gonna to have to function with it so water is a necessity. So habitats are gonna provide it for them. Shelter, this one's interesting. This is where they find some protection. So they're gonna be able to hide in it, around it, under it, someplace. They're gonna have a way of protecting from weather. They're going to have to find a shelter from a storm or changes in the environment. Remember, living things are able to adapt and change. So that's where the shelter is. Space is an interesting one though. Space is where you're going to have room to do what you do as a living thing. So if we put it in um, terms that you might understand, in your house, you've got spaces that are shared like a living room or a kitchen or a bathroom. And then there's spaces that are your very own. So you can be you in your house, like your bedroom, or if you have a playroom, those are places where you can just be who you are in your home. Spaces can be shared with other living things, or they can be a space where you're able to do just you. And in habitats like the one here at our Camp Aranza Zoo, you find all sorts of spaces for living things to do what they need to do. Our challenge today is we're going to go on a habitat walk and we're going to really sit and observe the habitat that's here by the bayfront called a wetland. Wetlands are amazing places and we're going to actually got to kind of go and be in it for a while and I'll explain some of the, the characteristics of a wetland and some of the things that those living things are able to do in that wetland to make it function properly. So let's go get our stuff together, let's get our nature journal, our hiking gear, and off we go to a wetland. All right, folks, I told you we were going to go to a wetland today and just take an observation. From the start, we're going to go in and get it a little deeper, but you notice that there's a lot of plants and some water and, of course, a lot of critters. So that's one of the things right away. The word wetland tells you that it's going to be wet land. And we're gonna see what those habitats provide for the living things that enjoy it. So one of the things about a wetland is that it's not necessarily wet all the time. It can be wet part of the year and dry another part of the year. And that kind of matches some of the birds that are, and animals that you're going to see there that like to migrate or travel in and hang out for a while. We have a duck over here in the pond and the duck is a great example of a migratory bird or a bird that travels from one place to the other, one place for the summer, one place for the winter. And wetlands are perfect places for birds like that because they provide resting grounds along the way. Because there's a lot of water and they can hang out and find the food that they need, a wetland's a great stopping place and resting ground as they're migrating, migrating back and forth. So plants. 
you're going to see a lot of them in a wetland because there's a lot of water. And those plants are important because they serve a couple of important roles for a wetland. One, they're there to help soak up some of that extra water and use that and store it in their stalks and in their leaves. The other thing that they're doing is that they're actually providing food for a lot of animals that might come in and visit a wetland. Wetlands are great grocery stores. Lots of animals can come in. You got your herbivores with the plants, you got your carnivores with the meat eaters, and you got your omnivores who eat both plants and animals. Wetlands are great for that. You find all sorts of food items in a wetland, so it's a great place for that. Plants are the start of that in the food chain, and they provide a lot of um, food and so resources for those animals that are coming in. Another thing that they can do is that since there's so many of them, they provide great hiding places in between. You can see it's really thick, and if you're an animal tucked in there and hiding, it'd be really hard to see. So safety is an important part of a wetlands function, is to provide that space to hide and be safe from other things. Weather, place to rest, all of that's really great in a wetland. of animals that come into a wetland that need it for resting grounds. The last thing that a wetland is really excellent for is a nursery. A lot of animals come into a wetland, especially during the wet season, and have their babies because there's so many plants and so many great places to hide that the babies are nice and safe. Any animals that need water um, to live in, it's a great place too to learn how to do what they need to do so the babies have a pretty safe place to either learn how to swim, or be around water with their parents and not worry about bigger predators maybe coming through. So Welland is a great place. We have a great examples of the food, water, shelter, and space here. See, we've got our water, we've got the plants starting off our food chains, but we've got insects coming in doing their thing, we've got the birds, we even have some fish that we don't see in the water. So you've got the food provided, we've got shelter in those places to hide, and then we have a lot of space for these animals to do what they need to do. Your challenge is to go and observe some habitats around you and then design one of your very own. Make sure that you provide that food, water, shelter, and space for any living things at the, in the habitat that you design. And then we want to see those. So put those up on our website or share those photos with us and hashtag Camp Aranza Zoo. And we want to see the habitats that you create. All right, everybody. Habitats, again, can be found in all different places. Um, 
we have a habitat here. So we have a mom bird called a killdeer. She's actually right in front of me and she's pretending to be hurt. She does that on purpose to make sure that you're not anywhere near her baby. So if you're a predator and she's pretending to be hurt, it's easier to catch a hurt animal than a not hurt animal. She's trying to distract us from her nest. Come here, let me show you. We're gonna be as careful as we can, but there are four eggs on her nest and those are going to be baby killdeers very soon now, out of respect to mom we're not going to be here very long but that is a cool find so that's a nest it is an example that you guys can see as a habitat in a bigger habitat just for mom really cool find today